Okay, I think we'll get started. Good evening. I want to thank everybody for joining tonight's virtual public meeting on our proposed sales network as part of the FAIR Transformation Project. My name is Lindsay Heffernan, and I am the Acting Assistant General Manager for Policy at the T, and I'll be moderating tonight's meeting. First, the MBTA team has a presentation, and we ask you to hold all comments until the end of that presentation. Second, we'd like to remind everybody that this meeting is being audio and visually recorded and will be made publicly available following the meeting. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few meeting controls for folks who maybe are not quite so familiar with Zoom. You can go to the next slide. I'm gonna ask our Spanish interpreter to unmute himself. He should be in the Spanish room. We do have live Spanish interpretation at tonight's meeting. And I wanna explain how you can select your preferred language and now. Written instructions are also provided on this screen in Spanish. In your meeting or webinar controls at the bottom of the screen, please click interpretation. Then click the language that you would like to hear. Even participants in English should select English so that they can hear any comments being spoken in the other languages by the interpreters. So I'd ask everyone to please click an interpretation language. And I'm just gonna double check that our Spanish language interpreter is unmuted. Miguel, are you unmuted? We're gonna to have to ask tech support to kind of work with our Spanish interpreter, I think, to make sure he gets unmuted. Let me go to the next slide and um, talk about our ASL interpretations for tonight. This meeting also includes ASL interpreters. I would like to thank them for being with us. The meeting hosts will spotlight the interpreters to ensure that they can be seen at all times. The ASL interpreters inspect, yeah. Excuse me, expect to switch about every 15 minutes. If at any point in time you cannot see the interpreter, please let tech support know. Their names are also on this screen so that you can find uh, their image in order to capture it should it get lost behind uh, the slides. Next slide, please. Next, we also have closed captioning for this meeting. If you do not see the captions, please click the closed caption button at the bottom of the screen to get them started. Next slide, please. If at any point during the meeting, you have any technical questions about Zoom or the accessibility features of tonight's meeting, please feel free to chat tech support. That should be the top name on the list. It also listed as host. Um, and uh, they will try to help you problem solve. Next slide, please. So I'd like to introduce my other tea colleagues who are here with me tonight. I'm gonna ask each of them to um, turn on their screen and also um, say, say hello. Uh, tonight, again, my name is Lindsay Heffernan. I'm also joined by Anna Sandry. Anna, do you wanna share your, your role with the tea? Everyone, um, I am the Equity and Sales Network Analyst, um, and so I've been doing a lot of the um, analysis on this project. So. Nice to meet everyone. And the gentleman who is also listed as tech support is playing two roles tonight, Anthony Thomas. Hi, Anthony Thomas, a manager of policy development and outreach for the MBTA. Thank you for having me. And most importantly, maybe Dave Perry. Hi, I'm Dave Perry. I'm the Director of uh, System Installation for the uh, FAIR Transformation Project. Good to have you all here. Awesome. Thank you so very much. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to, um, in, a, in a few minutes, be turning it over to Anna, but let me start off by first asking um, Anthony if he can launch our first poll. We are curious. Um, what MBTA services do you use the most most often? You can click your answer.
And Anna, if you could go forward a slide, that would be great. Give people another few seconds to respond. All right. Do you want to publish that poll? So it looks like we have a lot of red line uh, riders tonight, but a good number of bus and um, and then pretty even on orange, blue, green, and commuter rail. We don't have any, any of our friends from the ferry tonight, but uh, we're glad to have all of you with us. Let me cover, let me try to set the ground a little bit for what we're what we're doing here before I turn it over to Anna. So the I'm gonna cover some background about what we're trying to achieve with fair transformation. Another way to talk about that is what our, um, what, how are we modernizing our, our fair system? Um, I'll then turn it over to Anna uh, for her to cover some detailed materials on, on the sales network. And lastly, we'll open it up for questions and comments from anyone who was here with us tonight. And if you wanna go, go forward to the next slide, that would be great. So currently, you can ride the MBTA and pay in cash on board our, our Green Line buses and the Mattapan trolley, meaning that when you board those buses, you have the opportunity either to tap your Charlie card, insert your Charlie ticket, or insert cash itself um, on, on our vehicles. We know that about 4.7% or almost 5% of our riders currently pay cash on board. These are pre-pandemic numbers, but, uh, and we also know that nearly another 4% use that opportunity in paying in cash to add value to their Charlie card. And so they put in $10 and $10 is then put on their Charlie card for future use. Um, that is an important segment of the population for us to serve our cash users. Let me go forward to the next slide and talk about why this is important. One of the things that we hope to achieve in, in, our, in our fair modernization or what we call fair transformation process is to increase the overall efficiency of, of paying for and then utilizing the MBTA. One of the major goals that we have is to open up all the doors of, of the T. So what you'll see here on the bottom part of this slide is everybody waiting at a station uh, to get on and enter that one door of the bus and then slowly make their transactions with the fare box, either tapping or paying in cash. And each person is standing there. This happens to be, it looks like a sheltered covering. So no one's in the rain, uh, but we know this leads to, leads to slowing down our overall system. One of the things that we know is that if we were to allow people to board at both the front of the buses or green line or trolley and the back, what we refer to as all door boarding is that we can dramatically speed up the amount of time that our vehicles spend at each stop and ultimately make our riders trips more efficient and make sure that we keep to our, our published schedules. That's a big goal for us in, in the fare transformation project. You can go forward one more slide. We have heard many things from the public about different ways that we could improve our system. Uh, folks want our, our services to be faster. These are quotes from our uh, various riders. They want it to be easier to sign up for reduced fare programs like the senior pass or our tap pass. Um, they wanna make it easier to get a Charlie card, meaning those hard plastic that are thick like a credit card cards. They wanna make it um, easier and faster to pay. They wanna think about how your Charlie card could maybe help open up other mobility options and many other things that folks would like to see us do that we're trying to accomplish through this project. You can go to the next slide, please. For us in the future, and it's not too distant future, in around 2023, the MBTA will be moving all cash payments off of vehicles and trying to implement all door boarding. That slide I talked about um, just a minute ago. When the new system is implemented, riders will no longer be able to pay cash at the fare boxes on board buses, Green Line, or the Mattapan trolley. We are not eliminating cash at the MBTA, 
But what we are doing is we are shifting cash payments off board to allow for faster and more reliable service for everybody. You can go to the next slide, please. One of that, I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague Anna, who's going to talk through what it what it takes to move cash off board and what the what the next steps for our system for our riders. Anna, please. Thank you, Lindsay, um, and good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Anna Sangri, and I will be presenting our proposal for an expanded network of fair sales locations. Um, I'm pretty excited to share this with you all today and get your thoughts and feedback. As Lindsay said, in order to fully achieve the benefits of speeding up our buses and light rail, we will be removing the ability for riders to pay cash at the fare box on board vehicles when fare transformation is implemented. Along with this change, however, fare transformation will be introducing many new sales channels above what we have today. Riders will be able to use their smartphones, contactless credit or debit cards, and load value via a call center, among several others. However, we recognize that not all riders will have the technology access or desire to use the system in this way. Therefore, um, we are vastly expanding our physical in-person sales channels to accommodate the needs of riders who use the system in different ways. Based on community feedback and discussions over the past several years, we have made this a critical component of our proposal and the upcoming outreach process. Um, we are focusing these in-person physical locations in communities we serve that are low income, communities of color, um, or underserved by traditional banking institutions. So our proposal focuses on fair vending machines and retailers, which encompasses the majority of our new fair sales network. Um, we will be greatly expanding our network of both to serve beyond just rapid transit stations to our many bus stops across the system. There are two types of fare vending machines that we will be deploying across the network, um, station fare vending machines and streetscape fare vending machines. Station fare vending machines will mostly replace the fare vending machines you see in stations today. Um, you'll be able to get new standard tappable hard plastic Charlie cards here, reload your Charlie card with passes and transit value um, and process account inquiries. Um, these machines will accept cash, credit, and EBT. Um, streetscape fare vending machines are a smaller version of the station fare vending machine, resembling a multi-space parking meter. Um, these machines are solar powered and wireless and are much more flexible in deploying outside at bus stops across the network. The streetscape fare vending machine has similar functionalities to a station fare vending machine with a couple differences. Rather than dispensing hard plastic Charlie cards, the streetscape fare vending machine will dispense temporary tappable Charlie cards. Um, these have the same functionality as a hard plastic Charlie card, but are less durable. Um, at station fare vending machines, balances from these cards can be transferred to a hard plastic standard Charlie card. Further overpayment in cash at a streetscape fare vending machine will be stored as an account credit that can either be cashed out at a station fare vending machine or remain in your account for future travel use. Um, finally, we will be partnering with retailers across the network to dispense hard plastic tappable Charlie cards and reload Charlie cards with passes and transit value. And all retailers across the system will accept cash. Um, so the accessibility of the new devices was an important consideration during the design process. Here I have outlined a few examples of the accessibility considerations and requirements for specifically the new streetscape fare vending machines and for retail locations. Um, for streetscape fare vending machines, we designed for accessible heights, as you can see on the diagram on the side, and require having a minimum clear floor space in front. Um, with regards to the display design and screen, we implemented an option for a high contrast mode, which enables users with low vision or colorblindness to have an easily viewable black and white version of the screens. Um, we designed content that is concise and intuitive, so users don't need to read long blocks of text. Clear audio instructions easily initiated through the audio button, which you can see here. 
um, that can be listened to through a speaker, through the speaker or headphones and a privacy screen option, which ensures the security of, um, of a user with a visual impairment while using audio mode and tactile braille labels along the screen, which you can see um, in the closer up image on the right here. Um, with regards to language, the machines will be in Mandarin, Cantonese, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. Um, we, uh, for retailers, um, we have worked with the MBTA system-wide accessibility department to create a checklist um, every retailer must complete prior to becoming a Charlie retailer. The checklist includes elements like having a wide front door, not requiring a step to enter, and having an accessible path from the nearest bus stop. Um, finally, we prioritize riders with disabilities during user testing of the machines and have made changes accordingly. For example, we heard during user testing that the ticket and receipt return tray was difficult for users with limited manual dexterity to operate. Um, so in the original um, design, users had to open a door in an outward um, direction with one hand and then reach with the other hand into a very small opening to reach, retrieve tickets and receipts. Um, but we worked with the vendor to update the design to make a larger return tray and redesign the opening so the door can be pushed in and tickets and receipts can be retrieved in a single motion with one hand. As station fare vending machines require power and shelter, these will be deployed at stations. Um, but we need to make choices about the type of sales location that best serves our mini bus, Green Line, and Mattapan trolley riders. So as you can see here, both Charlie retailers and streetscape fare vending machines have their pros and cons, and some riders may prefer one or the other. Um, Charlie retailers will allow our riders to have a face-to-face -face interaction to purchase fare products, which may feel safer and allow for riders to ask questions. However, Riders rely on the payment types and hours of our partner retailers. Um, fair vending machines allow for quick interaction and are always open and available. However, the outdoor nature of the machines means they, feel, they may feel unsafe at night and the machines issue overpayment as account credit instead of as change. So now that you know a, li a little bit more about the devices we are deploying um, in the background on this project, um, let's get into our process for selecting locations. So as some of you may know, originally the decision about where to put fair vending machines and retail locations was going to be made by the systems integrator, Cubic, following the MBTA drafted quantity standards. After receiving lots of feedback from the public, we realized that the quantity standards did not reflect the priorities we heard, and we decided to bring the decision-making process back under the MBTA. When we took this back, um, first we reviewed the past input we had received from a variety of meetings with community members and municipalities. Next, we identified our goal and guiding principles. We then decided on a methodology or approach for choosing which MBTA stops and stations should be targeted for receipt of a sales location nearby. After selecting these stops and stations, we looked at whether these locations are better suited for a fair vending machine or retailer. Next, we double checked our proposed network of sales locations to see how the resulting proposal aligned with our goals and principles, including having an outside agency assess the equity of our plan. So this is where we are now. Um, we are engaging the public to hear your thoughts and feedback on how we did. Um, and then we will use the feedback we collect to modify our plan prior to implementation. So after we have deployed fair vending machines and partnered with retailers, we will evaluate the resulting network annually against our goals and principles. So informed by past outreach, um, we identified the following goal and guiding principles. Um, our goal is to equitably locate sales locations across the MBTA network to ensure access for riders who need them most. Um, our guiding principles for achieving this goal are to, one, prioritize communities that use cash on board today, meaning riders who currently lack sales location access or who are underserved by traditional banking institutions. Two, prioritize high total ridership. So these are locations of high use with a demonstrated need for amenities. Three, prioritize seniors and riders with disabilities. These are populations who cannot travel far from, um, to get to a sales location. Four, 
prioritize locations with a high number of low income or Black or Latinx riders. These are riders who have been traditionally underserved by the banking and transportation systems. Five, incorporate geographic distribution to cover need across the network. Recognizing the geographic distribution of our region so we can distribute sales locations evenly and ensure all communities have equal access. And six, prioritize distributed sales location types, including retailers, fair vending machines, and administrative points of sale at community organizations to ensure riders can access the type of location that works for them. So to, to select locations in line with our principles and goal, um, we designed an approach and conducted an analysis to determine where best to locate in-person sales locations to accommodate the communities that need them. This analysis was informed by significant community outreach and by conversations with the MBTA policy working group over the past several years. Here you'll see that we've broken our approach to the sales network into five categories. First, coverage of locations of high network importance. So these are locations that we are proposing have access to fare vending machines as a standard of service. Many of these places are served by fare vending machines today, but this category is expanded to include the SL3, SL4, SL5, commuter rail zone 1A stations and Green Line extension. Next, coverage of highest need locations. So these are stops and stations that represent either the highest ridership in the system or the highest cash use in the system. Next, coverage of priority communities. So these stops and stations are relatively high ridership and cash use, but also serve low-income communities, communities of color, seniors, and riders with disabilities. Next, we recognize that we may, um, uh, that riders prefer to access the system in all sorts of ways. Um, so um, we wanna prioritize having cash all over our service area. So we've also prioritized geographic coverage in our proposal, aiming to cover as many current cash users as possible. Finally, we recognize that we might not have gotten this perfectly right. So we've reserved fair vending machines and retail devices to be able to respond to public feedback. So these maps show a high level overview of what our proposal looks like across the network. The yellow dots indicate proposed stops and stations where we plan to target fare vending machines. The green dots indicate proposed stops and stations where we plan to target Charlie retailers. And the purple dots indicate where we plan to target both a fare vending machine and a Charlie retailer due to high need. The grayish dots with the white outline are current MBTA retailers as of January 2021. We include them here because we assume and hope most of our current retailers will continue to be part of our network under the new system. These proposed locations will be used to guide implementation. I do just want to note our next steps will include ensuring that all proposed locations are suitable for a fair vending machine or retailer, working with municipal partners to secure installation permits, and rec recruiting retail partners. The final resulting network may therefore not look exactly like this, but this is what we are striving to achieve. At this point, I would also like to point out that we have a couple of public online tools created with the help of our customer technology department that allow you to take a closer look at locations near you. So I'm going to provide a quick demo for you here, um, and I encourage you to check these out in your own time as well. Can you all see this okay? Can you see this? We can see it. Okay, awesome. Um, so this is the first tool. Um, this tool allows writers to input a particular address or location and um, see all of the proposed locations um, nearby. Um, so I'm going to start by putting an address in Chelsea. Um, as you can see, um, about 10 the top 10 locations pop up um, near your address. You can see there's quite a few in this area. Um, I'm also going to input an um, intersection. So you can also input intersections. So I'm going to put this one in Cambridge. And again, you can see um, that the closest locations pop up um, within um, 
a walk of, of the location you, you input. Um, so this is um, the first tool. We have another tool that allows you to um, see a broader view of what our proposal looks like um, in a map view. So in the map, you can also put input addresses. So for example, we can do the address in Chelsea. Um, and we can zoom in and see the locations nearby and how they interact with the full, the full map of location. Here you can click on um, one of the dots and see um, what routes are being served at that stop, why the stop was selected. So this one, um, Washington Ave at Broadway, was selected for highest cash and total ridership. Um, and this is for both a fair vending machine and Charlie Retail. As a reminder, the um, purple dots are both a fair vending machine and a Charlie Retailer due to high need. The yellow are fair vending machine only um, and a Charlie Retailer. Um, the green dots are the Charlie Retailer only. Um, and the um, blue diamond are uh, current MBTA retailers that are part of the system as of January. So I'm going to... Uh, and, Can you see? Okay. Awesome. Um, so all of these tools are live on the MBTA website now. Um, and there is also a form where you can suggest additional locations or give us general feedback. Um, so we will share the links and a bit more information about these tools on a later slide. Um, but highly recommend um, playing around with either of those tools. They're a good resource. Um, so in order to check our work, so to speak, we've started to evaluate our proposed sales network. Um, here you'll see that the proposal covers 90% of all boardings on bus and light rail within a two to three minute walk from the stop, um, factoring in the ability for riders to go negative by one pair in the future system. This means that for 98% of bus and light rail trips, there will be a physical sales location within two to three minutes of either the start of the trip or the end of the trip. Um, looking only at trips paid for in cash, that number rises to nearly 100%. Um, so this evaluation used 2019 trips and boarding data, but for comparison, we also looked at 2020 ridership and found little difference. So now that we've talked about the plan, um, I'm going to dive into our plan for implementation. Um, so one important component to standing up a sales network that works is ensuring that we bring retailers into the network who meet the needs of our riders. Um, so this is why we have created a retail strategy to one, understand what retailers are near our proposed locations and two, prioritize retailers who better meet the needs of our riders. Um, before a retailer becomes a Charlie retailer, we will collect information from the retailer on hours of service, types of payment accepted, type of retailer and languages spoken. Um, the retailer will also be evaluated for accessibility for folks with disabilities. We will then compare the retailer to other nearby retailers based on the information we collect, compare the retailer's attributes to the need of the nearby stops and select the retailer best serving our riders or alternatively decide the location should receive a fair vending machine instead. Um, now I want to give um, an overview of our next steps toward implementing the plan. First, we will compile all the feedback we received from you and other members of the public and modify our plan based on this feedback. Next, we will seek partnerships with retailers and find suitable sites for fair vending machines using the plan to guide those locations. We wanna stress that the locations proposed will guide implementation but specific locations are subject to successfully partnering with retailers and finding suitable fair vending machine sites. Um, so we're prepared to move locations from the retail work stream to the fair vending machine work stream if they unsuccessfully progress in one or the other and find alternative locations when necessary while staying aligned as best we can to this plan. Um, we will be working with cities and towns during this process. Um, and also coordinating with other streetscape and transit improvement projects that may affect where we can install vending machines or partner with retailers. 
Once we have secured locations, we will deploy the retail devices and install fair vending machines. And finally, after our network is fully deployed, we will annually review the network of locations to find gaps and make sure the network continues to meet our goals. So as I mentioned, every year we will evaluate our sales locations to monitor how the network is serving the needs of our riders and communities. Our current thoughts for this ongoing evaluation reflect our guiding principles. However, we are still working on these and are very interested in hearing suggestions. Um, at this point, we have considered monitoring access geographically distributed across the network, access by low-income minority and limited English communities, access in high ridership locations, and access by cash-dependent users. For retail locations, we have discussed monitoring accessibility by riders with disabilities and hours of operation. But again, we are interested in your feedback. Um, so this is where you all come in. Um, we need feedback from the public to make sure we're getting this right. Um, so listed here are our main public online tools we have available to give feedback on the plan. Um, again, the location finder allows you to input your address and receive a list of proposed locations near you. The sales network mapper allows you to view the whole network of proposed locations and input your address to take a closer look at proposed locations in your neighborhood. Um, the online feedback form allows you su to suggest specific retailers you would like to see participate in the system, tell us about the types of retailers you would like to see participate, give suggestions on how we should evaluate our plan ongoing, and give any additional feedback on the proposed locations. Um, so this is a great tool for you to add your comments, questions, and suggestions on a variety of topics important to the development of the sales network. Um, so you can see links on the slide, um, which will be posted online after the meeting. And um, thank you all so much for listening. And I will turn it back to Lindsay to guide public comment. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. And in fact, I think many of those uh, tools were just posted in the chat, so you can start to play with them now if you would like. Um, we're moving now to the question and comment part of the evening. So uh, let me just share a few instructions. Questions can be submitted uh, in the chat pod uh, to tech support. We'll do our best to answer all the questions, but it's important to know that all comments are also part of our meeting record and will be shared with MBTA leadership. Um, we also, um, we have an opportunity to ask you for all kinds of different feedback. Here are some of the things that we are thinking about. Um, Anna laid out a whole framework for selecting locations. Does it make any sense to you? Is there any principle or priority that we missed when considering um, where to target sales locations? We plan to annually evaluate our, our network of sales location and make sure that it is working for, for our riders and for our community. Uh, did we get it right? Should we be doing anything differently? Are there types of realtor, uh, realtor, real retailers, wow, retailers, <laughs> uh, that uh, you would not feel comfortable entering or those where you would feel most comfortable uh, in order to enter to purchase any sort of Charlie product? And would you prefer visiting a retailer or stopping at a fair vending machine to purchase Charlie products? We shared some pros and cons that we have heard, but we're always open to more feedback um, to make this product, project more successful. So again, you can offer uh, details on, online on any of these, but now we're gonna open it up for comments. If you'd like to make a comment out loud, you must virtually raise your hand. You can do this on the computer screen, um, on the computer by pressing Alt-Y or clicking the raise hand button. Um, in the bottom center of your screen. If you're on a mobile device, you're going to tap the raise hand button in the bottom, bottom center of your screen. I will call on folks on a first come first serve basis. When it's your turn to speak, I will say your last name and I will let you know that I am unmuting you. If you're on a computer or mobile device, a box will pop up in the center of your screen. You will need to confirm that you would like to be unmuted before you begin speaking. Once you are unmuted, Everyone in the meeting can hear you. Before making your comment, please slowly state your name and any organizational affiliation if you have one. Before making, um, I also would like to ask you to remember to speak slowly as we have multiple interpreters working with us this evening. Kindly limit all comments to about two minutes. 
We ask that you um, make only one comment at a time so we can ensure that everyone gets a chance to speak. We don't have a ton of people tonight, so I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to get through everybody. As soon as you are finished, you will be muted again. So at this point in time, uh, I'd like to ask uh, anybody who has a comment or question for us to either raise their hand or put their question in the chat. And I am going to unmute the last name of Blackstrom. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Hi. Uh, the my question is: um, Are you uh, is the MBTA going to uh, going to make these uh, cash? systems usable with coins because a lot of the the impoverished people that i know uh utilize coins to ride the buses bus fare comes in the in the in the denomination of of dimes and nickels and some people even pay with pennies and uh so like how 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 is this uh, this transportation this transit being uh, going to be able to use uh, coinage as well as bills and you know credit card or debit card? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much for the comment. Yes, both the um, streetscape fare vending machines and the um, in-station fare vending machines will accept all coins. And there are no minimum load amounts. Of course, you one can use any form of cash at a retailer as well. I hope that's helpful. And I'm trying to unmute you again. I see you have a okay. follow-up for us. Go for it. Yeah, as a follow-up. Um, yeah. Uh, the the fair the fair uh, loading fare onto Charlie cards right now in the in the stations uh, is has a minimum of like two or four dollars and and a max and when you add you can't add it uh, according to your need you have to add it in the certain denominations and that. That's a real question. I mean, like, the, is, is the system going to be completely overhauled? Also, when I go to the um, when I go to the the local salespeople in my in Chelsea, my city, they they aren't able to. Uh, you're not able to um, to pay with uh, with credit card. You're, it's it's cash only, and so that's also a little. Um, I mean, th there are lots and lots of issues with with poor people paying for bus fare, train fare, with change, with uh, with um, lower denominations or or self determining how much money you want to put on your card and and will you be able to load the ride from from these these kiosks okay those are all my questions about it <laughs> no wait they're they're all good questions and we we appreciate them so uh, i can answer a, a few of them for you there is um absolutely to your question it's a complete overhaul there is no minimum load amount or a certain denomination that one must load in the future, in the future system. If a retailer, um, all retailers have to accept cash and if the store accepts um, credit and debit, they have to also do that for, for the MBTA. 
Um, so they cannot, they, they, they can't selectively say for the MBTA, they won't, they won't accept those other kinds of media. At this point in time, we have not yet um, uh, worked through the configuration for the ride. Uh, we are in the process of trying to design the system for a future integration with the ride. It's, it's on our list, but we have not got, gotten there, Ms. Baxter. There also, I think, just want to add one more detail to that. Stores are not allowed to require that somebody purchase something from their store in order to then use the MBTA, the, re the, the, the retailer's ability to add value to your Charlie card. Um, so you're not going to be forced to buy a pack of gum in order to then put money on, on your Charlie card. Um, I know, I'm not sure how much of an issue that is, but that's not going to be accepted. <laughs> Any other questions at this point in time? I'm not seeing any raised hands. Um, I don't know if we have anybody in the language interpretation room. Certainly the interpreter could let me know if there is anybody with a question in that room or people can put those, uh, any questions into the chat. So just a couple things to let people know. Um, coming up in the future, we are gonna be doing outreach on some other topics that may be of, of interest if you joined us tonight. Um, in April, we'll be focusing on our proof of payment system. The idea that everybody who boards um, any sort of MBTA vehicle um, or is in a paid area should have their own proof of payment on them at any given time. Um, we will be, um, Launching that in April, there is already some information up on our website um, on our Fair Transformation page. Um, and also in May, we will be focusing outreach um, evenings like this and other outreach mechanisms in order to talk about our future of fair rules. Um, if you're curious to know more about those, you can also go to our website and learn more about the fair rules. There is a one pager about that um, on the on the website and there'll be more meetings coming in the month of May. I'm hoping that people aren't making comments because they're all busy looking at the various mapping features and the comment features and you're filling those in. But um, I'm happy to hold on to the line and wait for anybody to join us. If you don't have questions, this is the end of our presentation. Um, and so we will, we, I also, if you can go forward one more slide in case, you don't want to make a couple of public comment or you can't get to the website and figure out the way through the forms. Our email is also open to you, um, publicengagement at mbta.com. Uh, and that is a great way for, for you to also share feedback with us. Uh, and that does make it through all of the MBTA teams that are, um, that are here, here and covered tonight. And we'll make sure that your comments get um, added, added into the roster from this evening. Pausing, just waiting to see if anybody else wants to raise their hand. If anyone's having difficulty raising hands, they could just unmute and start to speak or put your question in the chat. Okay, I think at this point in time, I am going to uh, thank all the MBTA staff who are here. I wanna thank everybody in the public for coming and being part of this process tonight. We hope you have learned something about the future of our system. We encourage you to check out all of those tools. Um, I also wanna thank all of our interpreters who have joined us this evening in order to make sure that everyone can uh, join us this evening. Ms. Backstrom, were you trying to make another comment? No, just thanks for thanks for taking my questions and my comment. Oh, I guess I have one. Wouldn't sure. it be great if if the the T were able to be alternatively funded and and provide 
uh, transit in, in the city of Boston and the surrounding areas for free? Ms. Backstrom, I think when COVID is over, you and I need to have a cup of coffee. Okay, uh, no. I have lots of thoughts about that. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you for being such an avid supporter of our of our work. Uh, we certainly want to do our best to make sure that public transit is fully accessible for everybody. Um, we recognize fares are at times a burden. Uh, unfortunately, they do fund an awful lot of our service too. So um, let's keep talking about that. You can email us, and and we'll, we we I would love to talk. I want to thank everybody for being here this evening. I really do uh, do appreciate everybody uh, being a being a part of this, and wish you a, a wonderful night. And encourage you to stay connected and let us know how we can continue to do better. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Good night.